Hi, good afternoon. I'm Mally Schantzfeld, Managing Editor at Medmark, publisher of Orthodontic Practice US. And today I will be speaking with orthodontist Dr. Juan Carlos Quintero, who will be a speaker at the 8th International Congress on 3D Dental Imaging. One of the many interesting questions that will be answered at the 3D Congress is, did you ever think it was possible to grow an airway? Airways have long been overlooked and undermanaged due to practical and technological limitations. Through the use of new low-dose CBC technology, airway anatomy, among other structures, can be clearly visualized, accurately measured, and therapeutically enlarged. At Dr. Quintero's lecture, you can learn not only how to incorporate airway information into everyday diagnosis, but also how to treatment plan around it and even enlarge airways orthodontically. You will walk away from this lecture changing the way you practice. You can learn more about this at the 8th International 3D Congress on Dental Imaging to be held in Las Vegas, April 11th through 12th, hosted by ICAT and Henry Schein Dental by visiting www.icat.com and clicking on the Events tab for more information. For those of you who are not familiar with the International Congress on 3D Dental Imaging, the event is in its eighth year. It's a unique two-day experience of lectures and demonstrations of real 3D imaging applications, and it offers 11 CE credits. You can get perspectives from knowledgeable industry experts and colleagues on real 3D imaging applications in dentistry during the lectures and breakout sessions. At the end of our broadcast, I will be revealing a discount code for $150 off the 3D Congress on Dental Imaging in Las Vegas, so stay tuned. As I said before, we're hanging out today with Dr. Juan Carlos Quintero, an esteemed speaker at the 3D Congress on Dental Imaging for several years. He received his dental degree from the University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania and his degree in orthodontics from the University of California at San Francisco. During this time, he also received a Master's of Science degree in oral biology. Dr. Quintero has served as the national president of the American Association for Dental Research. He has won numerous national research competitions, published over 14 articles in peer-reviewed scientific journals, and he currently lectures extensively, both nationally and internationally. Dr. Quintero is the immediate past president of the South Florida Academy of Orthodontists and is in private practice. He took over the orthodontic practice of the late Dr. Lindsey Pankey, Jr., in South Miami, Florida. Dr. Quintero, welcome. Please tell us some more about your session and the 3D Congress on Dental Imaging itself. Thank you, Mally. Well, like many others who will be attending uh, this uh, Congress, both as uh, participants and lecturers, uh, it's the eighth annual uh, Congress, as you mentioned. And um, I've been using Combeam now for seven to eight years, which kind of parallels how long this Congress has, has been taking place. So. It's kind of um, an interesting opportunity as this knowledge base and experience of 3D users is growing. Um, so what people really bring uh, at this level of the Congress is uh, all, all of that experience. And I will be sharing um, in my, my topic um, what I have learned the most um, using Combeam for the last uh, seven or so years. Um, for about five years now, we've been using Combeam exclusively on, on all of our patients. Uh, we do not orthodontically treatment plan any case without a full um, 3D assessment of the patient. And so what I will be sharing with everybody are, is basically that the pearls, um, what I've learned, how it's changed me as an orthodontist and, uh, and made me, I think, a better um, orthodontist, it really um, increased the, 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 the pleasure of practice and the satisfaction that I have in, in treating patients every day. Um, so this is just not true to myself, but my experience has been um, all the speakers and usually the attendings are people that come in and bring this uh, this experience and people are very open at, at this platform uh, very willing to share um, uh, notes experiences what they've learned and so forth okay um, we I have some questions for you dr. Quintero um, also something new this year at the uh, at this uh, that ICAT is offering a brand new marketing practice enhancement breakout session. That's very exciting. And um, now um, I am going to invite our audience to ask questions using the question app on the Google Hangout. Um, and remember uh, to stick around for the unique code that will, be that will be provided at the end of the Hangout to save $150 off of your registration to the Congress. 
Um, okay, I have one question. What is it like to attend the Congress, and what are your thoughts after attending as an attendee for previous years? And what do attendees get out of this event that is beneficial? That's a good, great, great question. Um, you know, we all attend lots of CEs. We invest a lot of time and resources in traveling and going to these uh, these courses uh, uh, throughout the year. And I have to say, Congress, uh, sponsored by ICAT, is probably my favorite uh, show of the year. Um, because it's really a coming together and a gathering of like-minded folks who are way past the 2D versus 3D conversation and can really sit down and learn. Um, so it, it, it is a, it, it's a very um, kind of evolved group of people that are technologically savvy, but at the same time we have beginners um, and people that are just kind of getting started with 3D. Um, so my experience has been it's a very open platform. There's a combination of uh, great speakers with uh, great vendors, awesome networking opportunities, um, and having a live uh, scan is always is always great to see uh, experienced clinicians uh, perform the live scan so people get a chance to, especially particularly newcomers, to see how, how that happens, the acquisition process. Um, one thing I failed to mention, um, which is pretty unique in this year's Congress, and it kind of overlaps with my topic, which is airway center treatment planning. Um, for the first time, uh, the ICAT people have brought in um, somebody from the medical field. So this year, we will, we have the luxury of having an ENT speak into the session. Uh, Frank Kronberg, um, really regarded as one of the top uh, ENTs in, in the country, um, will be flying out and giving a session on, on his perspective. Um, and this is what's happening with cone beam technology. It's really um, forcing dentists to reach across the aisle into the medical profession and bringing forth stronger collaborations and, and interprofessional networking with people from the medical field. Uh, and this is just a perfect example of how um, Congress has evolved now in their, in their eighth year. So I hope I answered your question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so you feel that, that having a discussion with peers is very beneficial um, to dentists and other people in the industry. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and in the Congress, you know, it's a two to three day um, a meeting where there's some social events and that's really some sometimes the the, the best and, and, and most fun learning that takes place um, kind of behind the scenes when you're uh, you may be speaking with somebody from Alaska or California and uh, New York um, and everybody's kind of a you know it's a relaxed non-competitive atmosphere um, and you can just feel the the vibrant energy of technology with uh, with all the ICAT team members and um, the vendors, you have people from different software um, companies, uh, practice management companies, uh, radiology companies. Um, so I, I, don't, I just don't know of any particular meeting that is more cutting edge than this meeting, and I really look forward to it every year. I strongly recommend people attend it. Um, I have a, a question about the ICAT Flex, um, one of the most recent additions to the brand. What do you think puts the ICAT Flex above other imaging systems as it relates to orthodontics? Well, you know, a lot of good uh, products out there, a lot of good companies, but for sure the ICAT Flex is uh, a real game changer in the industry, certainly in the field of orthodontics and pediatric dentistry, um, which is something I'm very, very excited about because I think the ICAT Flex is breaking ground. Traditionally, um, people have had concerns about uh, well, one of the barriers to introduction of, of, of cone beam has been the concern for radiation, uh, which has all been very valid. Uh, but the ICAT Flex now has been shown through independent studies uh, from John Lundlo, University of, Ca of North Carolina, um, can be as low as um, uh, maybe four times less than that of a Panorex, depending on the setting. So it's really, I think, setting the new standard of care in the dental industry, certainly in the orthodontic industry, and you will see other um, companies to follow suit very, very soon. So the ICAT Flex for me is something people really need to be uh, paying attention to. Um, there's more and more articles being written on it um, and, and people can learn perfectly here uh, the applications uh, from an everyday uh, use uh, to an isolated use for, for the ICAT. What can attendees hope to to learn from your specific ses session on airway. Yeah, so as I mentioned, what I'm bringing here is really five years of, of knowledge, what I've learned the most. And probably the one 
aspect of my orthodontic treatment which has changed dramatically is I'm really basing all of my treatment planning on, on airways. Um, and it's really the first thing that I look at when I diagnose a case. I say, okay, what kind of airway are we talking about? And we are involved in our practice um, in treating very terminal airway obstruction sleep apnea cases in adults who are intolerant of CPAPs um, where uh, all the other methods have failed and we do a lot of um, orthodontic orthognathic treatment to treat this, these patients and um, it's amazing to see the changes in the airways that take place. Um, but it's pretty involved treatment to do orthognathic surgery so it makes you um, and it's made me go back and look at children very differently. And so what I've learned here is that we need to think about the children when they're going to be 40, 50, 60 years old as adults and factor in uh, their airways as they grow. Um, what we're learning here is consistent with the science and the scientific literature that's, that's being published is that um, airways can be manipulated um, orthodontic during early screening and, and identification. And there's just no other way of doing so other than with, with a comb beam. And so when you bring in the ICAT flex into play, it brings in so many opportunities for that precise screening um, at a young age on children. So we're going to be talking about um, how we base airways or how we base work on our tr treatment um, on, on airways and how we use comb beam every day in our practice to really um, change the way we look at cases and really treatment planning very differently than, than how we used to. I mean, we never really used to think about airways. I mean, we'd look at faces and gum tissue, and we'd classify our bites. We'd look at cephalometric numbers and um, lower incisal angulations, and we do you know a lot of this with our, our hands to kind of simulate these these um, uh, abstract ideas. Uh, but there was never been traditionally much discussion about airways, um, and it's really kind of I made it my mission to bring airway. Um, uh, assessment to the forefront of orthodontics. I think we really have a special opportunity to help our patients um, and, and the ICAT flex is is fundamental for that. So that's basically what my lecture is going to be about. Excellent. We look forward to it. Um, we have a question coming in, uh, several questions from our viewers. Um, if, if you would like to answer it on the on-demand video, you can, but you just want to uh, address it right now. Do you advocate bimaxillary surgery for the treatment of sleep apnea? Absolutely. That has been proven time and time again in the orthognathic surgery literature to be the end-all, cure-all of treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. And there have been several um, uh, well-respected studies showing 100% resolution um, for patients that have uh, obstructive sleep apnea using um, bimaxillary surgery, but what we refer to as MMA, maxillary mandibular uh, advancement surgery. And we have several cases which have been very um, very nicely documented in our practice which we will be presenting at Congress um, showing the effects of that. And now with of course 3D comb beam imaging it's so easy to measure the results. So we have well documented before and after uh, cases that have undergone this, this type of surgery. So whoever asked that question, um, you're, you're spot on. <laughs> Um, another question, do you take your CBCT at first contact CR reference position? If not, why? And do you use CBCT instead of stone for study models? I'm sorry, what are, I cannot remember what stone study models are. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer the question, um, yes, we will be talking about the importance of standardizing the para parameters with which you take your scans. Um, because the scans can give you different type of airway measurements based on how those parameters are, are, are done, how the patient is positioned. Um, so to answer the question specifically, yes, we take all of our scans in centric relation, first point of contact. Um, we will talk about the different um, standards that we use, including, including tongue posture, uh, natural head position, and so forth. As far as uh, traditional study models, no. I stopped taking um, impressions for study models when I got the ICAT over five years ago. Uh, we still do modeling, but it's a very kind of um, uh, sophisticated, technologically speaking, kind of model. Basically, we send all of our scans uh, for dynamic modeling, where we get segmentation of, of the roots and the teeth. So we still have our study models, but they are very, very different. They are 3D interactive with roots and bone. Um, 
they've been segmented so with software we can manipulate um, structures with teeth and bone and and faces so um, again we're going to be talking about these uh, very dead on application questions um, in greater in greater detail at the at the congress yeah. Thank you, Dr. Quintero. We really appreciate um, your hanging out with us today. Um, before we wrap up for today, um, here are a few more exciting details about the International Congress on 3D Dental Imaging. ICAT is planning a raffle for a chance to win $50,000 off of the ICAT Flex. You must be present to join this raffle and, and to win. Also, this is ICAT's 10th year anniversary. So in celebration of ICAT's first decade of anniversary, you can use this code. Here's the code now that everybody's been waiting for. Hangout 150. That's Hangout 150 to receive $150 off of the event. Visit the URL that will be in the chat window in a few seconds um, to book your registration. Um, if you have any more questions about this event, go to www.icat.com. In addition, there's a room block at the JW Marriott for $139 rooms if you book under the room block, and this expires on March 10th or until supplies last. Again, Dr. Quintero, we thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Um, I look forward to hanging out with everyone again in our next Hangout, and we will hopefully see you at the Congress. Thanks so much. Thank you. See you there. Bye.